Okay, welcome everyone to my kitchen. It is late and this is the first opportunity that I had to actually sit and film and catch a little bit of a, a breath today. Today's been like a wacky day, so go figure. I'm gonna be filming in a wacky location. So anyway, I recently got nominated to do the, uh, the aquarium tuber challenge um, by my friend Matt over in China. His channel is called the, I always, I always get this mixed up. It's the Jiayo Nation. I always want to say um, Yajo Nation, but it's, it's Jiayo Nation. And so he's like a guy from Detroit that eventually made his way out and is now working over in China. And he's got like a reef aquarium and stuff. So that's kind of the connection. Um, so the way that this works, I guess, is that there's 10 questions, 10 preset questions that I answer and then I nominate some other folks to do the same sort of thing. All right, so let's begin. Uh, question number one is fish only tank or reef? Really? Uh, yeah, so reef tank all the way. Uh, the fish in my systems pretty much only are there for some sort of utility, like the vast majority. I mean, we take in some, some occasional, uh, not hitchhikers, but more like refugees uh, from, from people that are taking down their tank or something like that. So if the, if the fish doesn't have a specific job in the aquarium, it's, uh, it's usually like a rescue of some sort. Yeah, 99.9% .9 of everything I keep, it's gonna be coral. And that's the thing that I think really sustains um, people's interest in this hobby. I think a lot of folks get into the hobby through their appreciation of like the, the, the really colorful saltwater fish. But I mean, how many, I mean, this is obviously like a reef aquarium channel. So honestly speaking, how often do you look at um, like a fish only tank at a restaurant or something and say, wow, that inspires me to go do a fish only tank. I think that if we were really being honest, not very often. I think that most folks, Get in, get in through the fish. That's kind of like the the gateway drug, and then it ends up all into the to the coral. So yeah, obviously I'm all about the reefs. Um, question number two: Hard or soft corals? So uh, yeah, my cats are they're gonna they're gonna scrap just a little bit. So if you see me get get hyper distracted, it's because of them. They usually fight at night. Um, yeah, hard or soft corals. That's kind of a tricky one. I think I'm gonna go with hard coral for no other reason than it seems that in this hobby there's more of them to choose from. Um, I don't know if that's even true or not, but just like going through my own website, for example, when I have to update inventory, I noticed that like just like the sections for large polyp stonies and, so and small polyp stony corals, it's much, much, much larger than what we have for um, the soft coral section. So maybe even if you threw in like mushrooms and stuff like that, um, it, I think it would still be um, like widely outpaced by the number of stony corals that you can select from. So I'm probably gonna go with stony corals, even though on average they are more challenging. Okay, moving on. Um, what is my favorite coral? I kinda don't have one. You know how people say like, oh, I can't choose between my favorite kids or which one of my kids is my favorite. Um, I really can't decide when it comes to corals, which one's number one. Um, at different times, it, it used to be like elegance corals. I used to also like Blastomusa. Uh, I still like acans a little bit here and there. Um, I like their color, but I, I really can't pick, um, pick and choose. Yeah, sorry, I don't have a great answer for that. I, Across the board, I appreciate them all. Uh, okay, uh, number four. What's my favorite fish? It's a toss up between a copper band butterfly and a fox face. So I like copper bands because I hate Aptasia and they really do a masterful job of controlling Aptasia in the tank. Now, uh, and also I like their personality. They, they seem to, um, to, I don't know, be very social. They come right up to you. They, they eat out of your hand more than any other fish. 
Um, but obviously they're, they can be challenging because sometimes they don't take to a prepared diet and they just run out of Aptasia and starve, so there's always that worry. Um, I like fox faces because of the work that they do controlling algae, especially macroalgae. If you ever had, a, had an algae issue, it could probably be taken care of with a single fox face. And they do a better job of um, clearing out algae than tangs, and they also lack the, um, the aggressiveness that I sometimes see in tangs. There's a, a tank or two in our, in, our, in our systems here at Tidal Gardens where I can't add any more fish because, and I don't even have that many fish, don't, don't get me wrong, it's like three fish in a big tank, and I can't add any more because there's one tang in there that is just a straight up murderer. And pretty much any new fish I put in there gets beaten to death. And we're talking like a 300 gallon tank. And it's just, yeah, I'm really tired of, uh, of tanks, but I like the algae control. And so fox faces kind of give me that without um, the associated aggressiveness. They are venomous, so you have to kind of be careful of that, but I have never been stung myself. None of us have, and so it's not something that I worry about too much. Kitty. Okay. Uh, let's see, where was I? Okay, so what's my least favorite coral? Uh, putting on the, um, the business hat for just a moment, uh, it's gonna be anything that like I can't propagate. So things like tracheophilias, scolemias, stuff like that. I don't love having to purchase those for the business, um, partly because they're actually kind of expensive to acquire. Um, that doesn't ever help. And if one dies, you kind of lose money on all of them that you bought. So the biggest thing is you can't propagate them. So you, even if you could cut them and they heal okay, they never really regain their shape. It takes forever. Chances are you just killed them both halves. Um, so it's probably gonna be like some of the large polyp stonies that you just simply can't propagate. i not a huge fan. They look lovely. And for like a home hobbyist that just wants that signature, you know, big piece of, of coral that just has, you know, has like the, just draws all the attention to it, sure, great. That's wonderful for you. But for someone like me who, who's kind of seen a whole bunch of these things over and over and over again, they kind of like lack that, um, like that, that special draw to them. And all I get is like the misery of just having them in my systems and not being able to propagate. So not a big fan. Um, least favorite fish. So this is number six. What is my least favorite fish? So I already uh, talked trash about tangs, but I think that um, my problem with with certain fish is that you know some of them are just really ill suited for a home aquarium. So some of them might be simply too large for a traditional home aquarium, like a shark. It's not a great purchase. Um, Back in college, as a dummy, I bought a shark and I put it in a 55-gallon tank. And we, I mean, a, a lot of hobbyists have that kind of, oh, I'm such an idiot story. That's mine. I, I had a shark in a 55-gallon tank, and it stayed there for maybe an hour. Because I also had a trigger fish in that tank, and the trigger fish beat up on the shark within 15 minutes. Out came the shark, and I took it back to the store. Because I'm an idiot. Um, and there's, there's fish with like weird dietary requirements. I mean, certain butterflies and things of that sort. So you know, anything along those lines, I'm not a huge fan of. Okay, next up, number seven, homemade or commercial food. I'm a, I'm a, a fan of homemade, but I understand that it doesn't make sense for a lot of folks. I mean, if you have like a nano, for example, you'll never make food and use it in the scale where it actually makes sense. Um, in that sense, yeah, buying like a prepackaged or um, you know some pre-formulated dry pellets, whatever, that makes a lot more sense. Um, for me, that has like thousands of gallons to feed. Um, that's when it makes a lot more sense to to go ahead and make stuff in bulk because when you actually weigh out the food and you see how much you're paying per pound, it's sometimes like forty, fifty dollars a pound. Um, you can do better just by making yourself if you can actually use multiple pounds of food before it goes bad. We can, so we do. Okay, 
number eight LED T5 or metal halide lighting. Uh, yeah, if you've paid any attention to any of my recent videos, we're transitioning away from LED and more into T5. Um, I like their spectrum, I like their coverage. Not crazy about um, bulb life or electrical cost, but um, I'm liking the results that I'm getting as far as the corals go. Um, you have to understand that like Tidal Gardens is in the business of selling coral. So uh, if a coral is not coloring up well enough to sell, that's gonna be a problem. And unfortunately, certain corals don't really color up very well. Not, not all, but certain corals definitely color up better under T5. And um, I think across the board, things tend to, to look a little bit better um, and actually develop nicer colors under T5. So that's kind of the direction that that we've been shifting. So yeah, definitely T5. A metal halide, um, we didn't really do a, too much with that, but I'm sure that, um, I'm sure that's a very good light as well. <sighs> Number nine, what would be my dream tank? I would like to have something that I can actually swim in. That's how big of a tank I want. Like legitimately a large swimming pool sized aquarium. Um, probably in a greenhouse, not because I love you know greenhouse lighting or anything like that for um, for corals. I've kind of done that, and again, I've, we've gone back to more traditional lighting. But I want a greenhouse to separate it from my actual house because these things produce so much humidity that it'll just rot out a regular home structure. So with that in mind, I kind of wanted to have it you know be in a separate building altogether in its own little um, enclosure and for me to just have like a giant coral reef in there that I can that I can actually swim in because I like to go diving and stuff and I want to learn how to free dive and we're talking about dream tanks that don't have to be practical at all so that's what I want some 50,000 gallon pool okay and number 10 all right so we I have to challenge now three other cha uh, channels to take part in this uh, aquarium tuber thing so I don't know who's been nominated, to be perfectly honest. Um, I talked to one person and she hasn't done it yet, but she's been nominated by like 10 other people. So I'm going to go ahead and pile on. So Miss Saltwater Tank, um, I will nominate her first. And I'll put links to all their channels down in the, in the comments. Uh, number two, uh, why not let's go with George um, from CoralFish12G. Uh, if he can break away from his college studies, he can do a video on this. And number three, um, I don't know if Mark Levinson has been nominated yet, Malev's Reef, so let's try him. And I, I know I only needed three, but let's just uh, open it up to you guys. So if I were to nominate a fourth, what would you suggest? So in the comments below, put in your favorite or whomever you would like to hear talk about these, uh, these 10 topics. Toss it in there. So anyway, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed. So, uh, thanks guys. Uh, and, and thanks uh, to Matt from Yajo. No, damn it. It's Jayo Nation. God. Like I said, I, can't, I can never remember his, his channel. So anyway, um, yeah. So thanks Matt and uh, thank you guys. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.